today's Virtual Mondays guest can be described in many great words, but is far more than any of these could ever describe. Diligent, dedicated, caring, cooperative, fun and fast moving. We've seen him go from idea to innovation, determined to seamlessly knit together the worlds of the ever-growing care receivers with the world of quality care suppliers. Also, by working with him, I've got a deeper understanding of dyslexia and what it really is and isn't. I've discovered that one of this mindset's biggest challenges is to know where to start, like a ball of string, often struggling to find the end from which to begin. But once that string is grabbed, the unraveling becomes inevitable, often at a lightning pace. But how long is a piece of string? As a pragmatist, I'd say it's twice the length from the middle to the end. But unlike the ball of wool, our speaker is no sheep. Following others, no. But instead is setting a new bold path. Creator of the Care Connector Network, we bring to you Ian Clay. Good morning, Ian. <laughs> Good morning, Richard, and thank you very much for that introduction. Um, so today I'm going to speak to you um, a little bit about dyslexia. Um, so I'm dyslexic and I also have ADHD. Um, but I was diagnosed with dyslexia when I was 32. Um, when I, went, I was told through school I was thick, stupid, never achieve anything. And then I went to a college to find out about doing a nutrition course because everyone at the gym used to ask me what to eat to put weight on, lose weight. I was a chef by trade. And that ended in me doing a six year degree, but <laughs> more about that another time. Um, but while I was there, the person who I was, who was interviewing me said to me, um, have you ever been tested for dyslexia? I said, no, why? And she said, did you um, write this um, application form? And I said, yeah, thinking that she thought I was like trying to pull the wool over her eyes. She said, I haven't spoken to you for, so, for the last half an hour. She says, the reason I'm asking about the dyslexia is because you have more worldly experience than everyone in this building put together. However, this looks like it's been written by a 10 year old. So I got diagnosed half about, well, actually about two thirds of the way through my diagnosis, the fire alarm went off and Mitzi, who was doing the test went, don't worry, we no need to come back. <laughs> um, so yes, I was diagnosed with dyslexia on that day. But how has it affected me and how does it affect me? Um, within my business life. And then how have I, overcome some of these things and what should we be looking at so how does it affect me is the time it takes me to do everything I will it'll take me 20 to 40 minutes to write an email um, that will probably take the average person about three the time it takes me to get stuff down is ridiculous when i'm speaking to people not a problem that's why i'm a member of the professional speaking association because i can talk about things and people say well why don't you use the dictate app well because my brain knows it's writing because you don't speak the same way as you write so my brain goes into writing mode and shuts down the same way as if I am writing. But people always say to me, what help do you need? Let me help you. Okay. That's my brain. Which bit are you going to help me with? That is how my brain is. I always say, if you ever seen Men in Black 2, it's like Orion's belt. It's a little marble that's full of a galaxy. There is so much going on in there that I personally don't know where to start. So this is the problem for me. When people go, let me help you, what can I do for you? 
I don't know. I literally don't know. So people like Richard, who do help me quite a bit, and have got to know me, and my friends that have got to know me, now say, what are you doing? And I tell them, and they go, right, I'll do that bit for you. I can help with that. You need to tell me what you can do for me. I actually started in 2000, and it was 2020, I started doing some stuff around dyslexia when I was at the Professional Speaking Association conference and was speaking to a few people that are autistic. And I said, I should be doing this for dyslexia. And they went, and why don't you? And I started to put together a keynote and a talk and a workshop. And the biggest thing that came to it is nobody ever asks me the right question. Everybody always asks me, what can I do for you? So in a work environment, it will be the same for people. What support do you need? I don't know. What support have you got? <laughs> I don't even know what I need to do yet. It was the same at university. At university, I was in a position where I had to sit my final exam three times because the steps up were massive from first year to third year. In fact, the steps up from first from third year into fourth year were massive. But no one told me that because I was like getting, so in year one, I was getting 70, 80%, even 90% on some of my stuff in the 90s because it was all multiple choice. Then it was, then it dropped a bit down to about 60, 70% because I had to do some writing. Then in third year, we went into writing four essays in for one question, my brain just couldn't cope with that. They then told me I didn't know my stuff. In the end, I got 89% in my final exam because I transcribed it. I didn't dictate it to anyone either because I'd never worked with a scribe. So I actually wrote training sessions for each of the questions and managed to get through that way. But no one told me what things were gonna be going on. So the question isn't that you should be asking people with dyslexia, what can I do to help you? It's, what are you doing? Do you need help? Yes. Well, then I can help you with that. All, pretty much all of my essays at university were started by my ex-wife. Pretty much every single one of them because I just don't know where to start. I look at something and go, I have got no idea where, where to go with this because it's all in that realm of the galaxy spinning and burning away. But then when I told her what I needed to do, she would write the first two or three lines and I'm like, yeah, okay, let's go. Because I then had a point of where I can go from. But when I look at a blank page, I struggle. It's like yesterday I had the conversation with Richard about doing this. What did he want me to do? Where should we go? And as soon as he said one thing, I was like, all right, okay, yeah, no, I've got it, it's fine. I, I think the conversation on what we were going to do and where we we're going to go lasted about 20 seconds. Because as soon as Richard put something into my brain, I'm like, I'm there, I'm off. But I do look on the bright side of things. Because even though I struggle with a lot of things, there are things that make me and us as a community of neurodiverse people stand out in a good way. From a dyslexic point of view, I see the big picture like that. When I came up with the Care Connect Network, I did it in 20 minutes from start to finish, what people would get, how it was gonna work, what it was gonna look like, because it's automatic for me. 
I drive down the road going, well, if they did that, that would make life so much easier. Like the Kingston Bridge in Glasgow, for example, every day, traffic jam. Every day, because everyone's trying to get over into the outside lane. Put a straight white line down there. Between the hours of half past four and six o'clock, you can't cross that line unless you're going right the way through Glasgow. And out the other side, not turning off somewhere. That'd keep traffic moving. All these sorts of things go through my head constantly. Now, I did a talk about neurodiversity um, within the Care Connector a few couple of months ago. And it was really interesting because the care sector has got a lot of people that are neurodiverse by nature of what they do and the staff that they employ. You know, we've got masses of um, neurodiverse people that they don't tap into either. So we were talking about this and it was really interesting because everybody who is neurotypical told me that I had to slow down because they couldn't keep up with the way that I was doing things. And you go, hold on a minute. So I've been told all my life that I'm thick, stupid, and never achieve anything. And really, <laughs> it's you that can't keep up with me. You can't keep up with the thought processes I have and the where I want to take them and what I want to do. So who is it that's got the problem? Me or them? I say, I'm not slowing down because if we slow down, we won't achieve. They need to speed up and catch up. Does anyone have any, oh, there's a couple of things I want to say, sorry. There's two things that I use that have really helped me. Two things that have really helped me. One of them is, well, three things actually. Calendly, if you don't know whether you use it or not. Grammarly has been really helpful to me. And also short keys. You can actually put in like an email or something like that, or if it's, if it's something that you send out constantly to people, you can put it into this um, program called short keys and you basically press short keys. So you press hash hash three, for example, and it'll bring up whatever that is for your email. That's been really helpful. Okay. Does anyone have any questions 